If your only information about the sinking of the Titanic comes from the James Cameron film with the same name, you probably know that following the Titanic's collision with an iceberg in the North Atlantic on the 14th of April 1912, the captain and crew made desperate and heroic efforts to save the ship, but that these efforts were futile, as too many watertight compartments had been holed and the great ship was doomed to sink. The 1958 film A Night to Remember, which I personally think is the better movie, and certainly the truer to what actually occurred on the night of the 14th to 15th of April 1912, covers in much more detail the efforts of Titanic to contact nearby ships, and how one came to her assistance, though tragically too late to avert huge loss of life. Once Captain Smith realised his ship was doomed, he ordered the wireless room to begin calling for assistance using the new Morse code call SOS. Many vessels responded, but though only about 10 miles away, the passenger liner Californian remained silent and unresponsive to Titanic's urgent calls. The reasons appear to have been that unlike Titanic, the little Californian only had one wireless operator, whose shift ended minutes before the Titanic began sending its SOS, so it never received her calls. Also, the officers on watch and the captain ignored the white distress rockets the Titanic began firing, thinking they were company signals, and that Titanic was signalling to another White Star Line ship instead of requiring assistance. The next closest ship was the liner RMS Carpathia, some 58 miles from Titanic when its wireless room received the SOS. Her master, Captain Arthur Rostron, immediately ordered his ship to make maximum revolutions towards the Titanic's position, and A Night to Remember shows just how determined Rostron was to save the Titanic's passengers. Unfortunately, though he pushed the Carpathia to its maximum speed limit, the distance was just too great, and the ship didn't reach the Titanic's last report of position until 4am on the 15th of April, one and a half hours after the Titanic had sunk. The Titanic took over 1,500 people with her, most dying of cardiac arrest or hypothermia in the freezing water. The Carpathia spent four and a half hours locating the Titanic's surviving lifeboats and taking off the cold and traumatised survivors. Every preparation to receive survivors had been made by the captain and crew of the Carpathia, and the Titanic's survivors were well cared for. In total, Rostron rescued 202 first-class, 115 second-class and 178 third-class passengers, plus four officers and 206 Titanic crew. Then, at 9am, with 705 survivors aboard, the Carpathia sailed for New York City, the original, final destination of the doomed Titanic. Slowed by fog and thunderstorms, the Carpathia finally arrived in New York on the evening of the 18th of April, 1912. <laughs> During the period between rescue and arrival in New York, some of the surviving first and second class passengers from Titanic formed the Titanic Survivors Committee aboard Carpathia. The aim of these wealthier survivors was to raise a general fund to aid the now completely destitute third class or steerage survivors, who were poor emigrants to America who had lost, aside from family members, all their worldly possessions during the sinking of the Titanic. During the few days aboard the Carpathia, the committee raised $10,000, a not inconsiderable sum at the time. Once ashore in America, the Titanic Survivors Committee met to distribute funds to survivors, but it also felt that the captain and crew of the Carpathia required recognition for their rescue efforts. To this end, money was found to create a special medal to be awarded to all members of Carpathia's crew. These medals are today worth a small fortune, and occasionally come up for auction in Britain and the US. Chair of the committee was the irrepressible Margaret Brown, the multi-millionaires known to history as the unsinkable Molly Brown. The New York firm of Deges and Clust was contracted to manufacture the medals, and as many of the medals are found today in Tiffany boxes, that company may also have been involved. The medals, identical in size and design, were manufactured in gold, silver and bronze. Gold for Captain Rostron, the purser, surgeon, chief steward, chief engineer and second engineer of Carpathia. 
Silver medals were awarded to Carpathia's junior officers and leading rates and bronzed crewmen. The obverse of the medal depicts Carpathia amongst icebergs and lifeboats with an elaborate border of nautical motifs. The reverse carried the following inscription, presented to the captain, officers and crew of RMS Carpathia in recognition of gallant and heroic services from the survivors of the SS Titanic, April 15, 1912. The medal has a looped suspension ring and hangs from a maroon ribbon. It is likely that more were manufactured than were issued as replacements to cover losses or damage medals. Sources suggest that 14 gold, 110 silver and 180 bronze medals were presented to the Carpathia's crew. I mentioned that these tangible connections to the Titanic tragedy are very valuable. Bronze medals sell between three and a half and five and a half thousand pounds. Silver medals are worth between twelve and fifteen thousand pounds, while the very scarce gold ones fetch between thirty-five and forty-five thousand pounds, sometimes more depending on who they belong to. The Titanic Survivors Committee also presented Captain Rostron with a fine engraved silver loving cup, this object being auctioned in Boston, Massachusetts in 2014, achieving $198,000. The Carpathia, no longer under Captain Rostron, was sunk by a German U-boat in 1918. Captain Rostron received, in addition to the Titanic Medal in Gold, a Congressional Gold Medal and a medal from the Liverpool Shipwreck and Humane Society. He served on as a Royal Naval Reserve officer in World War I, commanding troop ships, and after the war returned to command ocean liners. In 1926, he was appointed a Knight Commander of the Order of the British Empire, becoming Sir Arthur Rostron. He died in 1940, aged 71, and is buried today in the graveyard at West End Parish Church in Southampton. Many thanks for watching, please subscribe and share, and check out my other Titanic videos which are linked in the end screen to this video. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon, details in the description box below.